Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. It's been a long time coming, but tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. All right, folks, there's a lot going on right now. Decisions being made that are unprecedented and will have an overreaching impact on what it means to live in the United States of America. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives have just overwhelmingly passed the National Defense Authorization Act. Squeezed into this military funding bill are two provisions that give the military not just lots and lots of money, but lots and lots of power as well. A new generation of surveillance drones could soon be watching us all. The Federal Aviation Administration is expected to announce plans to expand the use of domestic drones in American airspace. Well, get ready to look up at the sky and see drones hovering above. As of now, unmanned aircraft could only be used by military airspace and by certain law enforcement agencies. But this week, Congress passed a bill that would allow for commercial and private use of the drones. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. You think I'm joking? shopping and dining over Thanksgiving and maybe watching some football games, big government Republicans and Democrats were busy shredding the last vestiges of the Constitution. Senators John McCain and Carl Levin want to declare, want to enact a law that would declare the entire United States of America a battlefield for the military. They're talking about inserting the army into domestic law enforcement. Senator Lindsey Graham, who supports this bill, says, quote, the homeland is part of the battlefield, and people can be held without trial, whether an American citizen or not. The Department of Homeland Security buying ammunition, now looking to purchase another 21 million rounds of ammunition. This in addition, of course, to the 1.6 billion rounds that Homeland Security has bought in just the past 10 months. Now, to put all of this in perspective, the military used approximately 70 million rounds each year of the Iraq war. 70 million rounds in a war. If you look at what the Department of Homeland Security has been purchasing over the last year, uh, it comes out to like 1.6 billion rounds of ammunition, more than 7,000 fully automatic assault weapons, 2,700 MRAP type vehicles, and now drones. Those are instruments of war. Department of Homeland Security's, who are they going to fight a war against something Go happened, back. Something happened to is robert whitaker the tactical supervisor for el paso srt for homeland security investigations well we have our, our big vehicle out here is our armor vehicle uh, it's an AMRAP vehicle, it's mine resistant, ambush protected is what it stands for. That's what we use to deliver our, our, um, our team to uh, high risk warrant services. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. Important breaking news out of Boston, a pair of bombings rocked the finish line at the historic Boston Marathon. It was never meant that we would have this gigantic uh, police force from the from the federal government. I mean, we had martial law up there, FBI and all these agents coming in, closing things down, going to people's houses. Do we close down cities because there's 10 murders over the weekend in Chicago? We, we don't do that. Mm. Uh, but here we close down a whole city, not even allowed to go to a baseball game. I mean, I, I think I think it's very, very scary when I look at some of those pictures. The military likes to perform war games, so that's why we're seeing military on the streets practicing. Uh, they are actually practicing. Um, the, the tanks that we see on the streets and the uh, National Guard patrolling neighborhoods and, and uh, the practices that they're doing with our local police department, this is all in preparation for martial law so that when they do actually lock down the country, they've got everything secured. 
But I think what we're starting to see, for anybody who is objective at all, is we're seeing a totalitarian system now unveil itself. And ever since essentially 9-11 happened, it's been more and more of these draconian measures that are leading us right down the road to martial law. Particularly to hear President Obama claim the power to keep people in prison indefinitely with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. It's particularly stunning to hear him make that claim in the middle of a speech that was all about the rule of law. This last week, the U.S. Congress passed a bill uh, which repeals a toxic comitatus, which means that they, we have now uh, institutionalized and codified uh, martial law. Right now, the, the battle against uh, terrorism involves all of us. Everybody in this country is a potential terrorist. <laughs> We don't even understand freedom anymore. We are a country that is headed towards socialism, totalitarianism, beyond your wildest imagination. I have to tell you, I'm doing a story tonight that I wanted to debunk these FEMA camps. I'm tired of hearing, you know about them? Sure. I'm tired of hearing, I wanted to debunk them. Well, we've now for several days done research on them. I can't debunk them. I don't know anything about them. It is, it is our government. If you trust our government, it's fine. If you have any kind of fear that we might be headed towards a totalitarian state, look out, buckle up. There's something going on in our country that is, uh, ain't good. And they find a little red dot or a little blue dot on their mailbox, and they wonder what the little red dot and blue dot is. Well, it's marking your mailbox by the government so when foreign troops come in here on us after martial law but if you have a blue dot they take you to the fema camps being built by halliburton right now to house 50 million americans are building enough concentration camps in america by halliburton so i'm going to tell all of you if you have not bought ammunition if you have not bought guns go get them now go get them now because you won't be able to get them much longer change has come to America. Practice Christianity and you could be court-martialed. That could be the new law of the land for our armed forces, thanks to a proposal by a religious tolerance group that claims Christian evangelists are predators. There is a war on religious liberty within the military and that the Christianity of service members is now coming under attack by the Obama administration. It's so incredible. Here's a new article by Kurt Nemo that's got links to Fox News, Denver Papers, you name it. The state police have gone public and said, we're in federal training now where they're asking us, will we confiscate guns from Christians? Now, do you understand how even more illegal that is? Behind the scenes, they're training for what can only be called a foreign authoritarian takeover of this country via the federal government and the foreign banks. Here's the article, Colorado Troopers Trained to Consider Christians as Dangerous Terrorists. Absolutely amazing. And it's all bibliographed. It's all linked to it being announced, to it being reported. The company has now implanted two workers with microchips to monitor their movements, causing some to charge invasion of privacy. The company says it's merely a layer of security beyond key cards and clearance codes. If I don't get one of those soon, well, joining me now is Lance Ulanov, editor-in-chief of PC Magazine. Lance, this sounds like some freaky science fiction book. Tell us what this is about. These two workers have microchips? Right, right. well, this is very, very real, and these microchips are about the size of a grain of rice. They get injected into your skin film. Humans injected with a tiny chip holding the key to all of their private information. But as you're about to see in our CBS 46 investigation, it's not fiction. In fact, it's being marketed in Georgia as life-saving technology. Life-saving technology. We have a Florida family who are really pioneers in a brave new world. They have volunteered to be the first ever to have microchip identification devices implanted into their body. It is and the first implantable microchip for humans that has multiple security, financial, and healthcare applications. One thing I would just suggest, I'm just an outside soon-to-be investor. I love this idea, by the way, Scott. I think this. The Northside Independent School District in San Antonio has put tracking chips in the ID badges for more than 4,000 high school students. 
Well, it looks and sounds like something out of the future, but a new palm scanning device will help Bossier Parish schools keep better track of what children are eating at. The electronic device will be implemented at all Bossier Parish schools. And now we're seeing a complete totalitarian takeover of the United States of America. And we've been talking about this for years now. This is the police state. This is the police state. This is what a total breakdown of our society looks like. But we're seeing all of this intensify. This is all intensifying uh, around uh, the Second Amendment. Should we be able to own guns or not? Let's take guns away from the people. Uh, these are very big, very hardcore issues. Subject to other police action. The use of riot control agents and or less lethal munitions, which could cause risk of injury to those who And every person on the United States soil or international soil can be deemed as a terrorist. If they have really any reason to want to detain you, they don't need to acknowledge your Fourth Amendment rights. It's what supported things like the Patriot Act and now the NDAA and the ever encroaching police state. By order of the city of Pittsburgh Chief Police, I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. I order all those assembled to immediately disperse.